All right, man, here we are. I put off this video for a little bit, tried to hold off on it uh, for as long as possible, just because I, I wasn't sure if I was ready to make it. Still not sure if I'm ready to make it, but we're gonna do it anyway. I have a similar list to uh, most YouTubers anyway. Uh, or even if you're not a YouTuber, I probably have the same list as you, or a similar list. So go ahead and let me know. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start from number one only because I'm sure my top two are just as, uh, are, are the same as anyone else's, right? Uh, Jake Paul at number one, KSI at number two. If you wanna switch those, put KSI at one and Jake Paul at two. I'm 100% okay with that. Uh, I put Jake Paul at number one, even with a loss at to, uh, to Tommy Fury, uh, just because of his resume. He's knocked out a former UFC champion. He knocked out Ben Askren and say what you want. Ben Askren was talent, uh, very talented at MMA. Uh, not so much at boxing, obviously, but still. Uh, he's over KSI because of that reason. KSI has, has knocked out uh, FaZe Temper, um, who is a, a challenge to any other influencer. KSI was just levels above him. Uh, had no business being in there with KSI. But anyway, knocks out FaZe Temper. Uh, Pineda, again, should not have been in there with KSI. He is a professional boxer, though. So anyone trying to discredit that is, is just dumb, right? Wade and Sensei. Whether you like it or not, KSI beat a professional boxer before Jake Paul did. I understand it's Pineda. It doesn't matter. <laughs> He's still a professional boxer with a professional record. Stop being biased, okay? He did. He knocked out. He or he, he beat a boxer before Jake Paul did. That's all there is to it. A professional boxer. He beat a professional boxer before Jake Paul did. That's all there is to it. But anyway, we'll get off of that. Jake Paul still above him uh, because Pineda had no business being in there with KSI. Swarms, you already know the deal. <laughs> and uh, who was Logan Paul? Logan Paul is a challenge to any other influencer. Uh, yeah, I mean he is, right? Logan Paul probably beats Temper, probably beats Deji. Now, he obviously did not beat Floyd, but he definitely showcased a lot of potential in that fight. Definitely gave Floyd problems with his reach and height there. And say what you want, we know Floyd is short, but Logan Paul is not a joke. Uh, not to be taken lightly uh, by all of these influencers. So I think he beats most influencers anyway, uh, which a lot of people have Logan Paul in their top five. I don't, so I'm going to go ahead and let you know that. Don't expect Logan Paul to be in this list. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but anyway, Logan Paul is not an easy, uh, not an easy opponent. That's all I'm saying. Saying that though, Jake Paul has still Tyron Woodley, Ben Askren, Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva, again, is a problem for most or any, most, if not all of these influencers right now. Anderson Silva, again, is not an easy opponent. Uh, and Tommy Fury on Jake Paul's, uh, resume. Yeah, he lost. But any of these influencers would lose Tommy Fury. Uh, maybe you could say KSI would beat him, but maybe we'll get that fight one day. We don't know. But anyone other than Jake and KSI and possibly Logan, Tommy Fury's running through them. I mean, that's really just all there is to it. You can say what you want about Saul Poppy, but we'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, Jake Paul has a better uh, resume uh, boxing-wise than KSI does. With all that said, Jake Paul is uh, number one over KSI for right now. If KSI goes in there and he beats a Joe Fournier or Tyron Ty Ty Woodley in May or whenever, we'll, we'll, we'll think about putting KSI at one. But for now, Jake Paul at one, KSI at two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's not even going to matter towards the end of the year. Once we, get, once we get Jake Paul and KSI, we'll see who's number one anyway. So whether you have KSI or Jake Paul at number one right now, it doesn't matter. That'll all get settled. So, Jake Paul 1, KSI at 2. At number 3, this is going to be controversial. It's going to be very controversial. I'm going to have a Nissan Gib at number 3. Say what you want. Uh, a Nissan Gib has continuously proved people wrong over and over and over. I don't know who he fought in his very first fight. That was on the KSI versus Logan Paul 1 undercard. I don't remember who he fought. It was some YouTuber. I don't even know. But in his second fight, he fought Jay Swingler, I want to say. And that was a battle, right? Obviously, both guys have improved since then. Uh, but either way, it was, it was a very entertaining fight. It was a back-and-forth battle there. So, Gib, obviously, that uh, win looks better and better for any son Gib, Jay Swingler. Uh, especially now, right? Uh, Jay Swingler has had two wins since that fight. So, that win looks better for any son Gib. But people were telling uh, Nissan Gib there was no way he was beating Taylor Holder. He went in there and dominated Taylor Holder. 
every single, what was it, four rounds, five rounds? I don't remember. Uh, Nissan Gibb went in there and dominated every single round, and there was no, uh, it was, <laughs> there was a controversy because uh, it ended as a draw, but later came out, uh, Nissan Gibb won the fight, and rightfully so, because if you watch the fight, you saw that Gibb dominated all five rounds, four or five rounds, however many. Uh, he won every single one. Didn't He didn't lose a single round in that fight with uh, Taylor Holder. So, and people thought he was going to get knocked out. So for him to come in there and win every single round, again, uh, very dominant by Nissan Gibb. And then his most recent fight, Austin McBroom. Uh, no one thought he was going to win this one. Uh, even the much bigger guys like Wade or Faye Sensei, they all said Nissan Gibb was possibly losing this fight, possibly even getting knocked out, and he did neither one of those. He came in and he won the fight, uh, knocked Austin McBroom out. Uh, specifically, he knocked him down like five or six times. I mean, Gibb just dominated the entire fight out of the first round. Maybe he lost the second round. Maybe that's, that's uh, that, that round was uh, much closer than the first one. But three, four, or five, did it go six rounds? Three, four, five, maybe six, I don't know. All those rounds went to Gibb, and Gibb ended up knocking him out. I think it was the fifth round that he knocked him out. I'm not sure. I could be wrong on that. Fifth or sixth round, Gibb gets the knockout. And uh, once again, proved everyone wrong. Gibb's number three for me. And also, he's number three because I think he would beat number four and five. Four and five is Slim and Salt Poppy. And I know, listen, some people have Salt Poppy over Slim and over Gibb. Not for me, no. Salt Poppy's number five for me. Uh, Slim is number four. Slim is number four. Uh, he's over Salt Poppy because um, he's under Gibb because I think Gibb would beat Slim. But he's over Salt Poppy because he's actually faced adversity in some of his fights, right? Uh, the one with Ryan Taylor, I think, went all rounds. Uh, his most recent fight with Tom Zanetti went all rounds. But they were closer than they should have been. They never should have went all rounds. Uh, Slim should have knocked them both out. Should have knocked out Ryan Taylor in October. Should have knocked out Zanetti in January. And that's the reason he's under Gibb. Considering he's had, what, four fights now, right? Fousey, um, NNA Productions, uh, Temper, Ryan Taylor, and, and Zanetti. So he's 5-0 and now. Salt Poppy is 3-0. and He's over Salt Poppy because Salt Poppy has had three fights. And really only one was, um, one was competitive against Halal Ham. The other two, he just dominated, right? Knocked out Andy Worski in less than 20 seconds. Uh, beat um, Josh Bruckner. <laughs> I don't know why I'm, I'm forgetting these, these dudes' names. I don't know why I'm forgetting them. But anyway, knocked out Josh Bruckner in two rounds, which is why a lot of people put him up higher on the list, uh, probably in the top three, because Josh Bruckner has had professional boxing experience before. But listen, no. Uh, I have not seen Salt Poppy uh, face any adversity, right? Uh, the first fight with Halal Ham, he pretty much dominated the entire fight. But again, he didn't knock out Halal Ham like he did Andy Worski and uh, Josh Bruckner. But saying all this, I, I just need more from Salt Poppy is all I'm saying. It's kind of like all of you with KSI, right? All of the KSI haters are saying, we need more. We don't know enough. That's how I feel with Salt Poppy. Yes, okay. He knocks out Josh Bruckner. That's not enough for me to put him above KSI and Jake Paul, right? Uh, not even a Nissan Gibb. If you want to switch him and put him over Slim, then fine. I'm okay with that. I'm not putting him uh, over KSI, Jake Paul, and a Nissan Gibb with only three fights and only one being competitive. Not even competitive. Only one being, uh, only one of those fights not leading to a 30-second knockout. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but y'all let me know. I'm sure most of you guys... Uh, probably disagree with the order here, but I'm sure those are your top five, right? Jake Paul, KSI, Gibb, Slim, and Salt Poppy. If you have Logan Paul in there, you're dumb, but that's the only other person that you can really put up there, right? Dean the Great doesn't belong up there. Shouldn't even be in the top five. So, say what you want. We're going to stick Jake Paul, KSI, a Nissan Gibb, Slim, Salt Poppy. That's my list. Y'all let me know how stupid I sound and uh, how, how, uh, how wrong my list is and how right yours is. Y'all let me know.